Most of us never stop to think about the duties of a dungeon master. They have to be architects, strategists, engineers, storytellers, and historians, along with a hundred other trades. Perhaps the hardest job they have, though, is that it falls to the dungeon master to enforce the rules. Whether we'd like to admit it or not, cheating is something that happens at most of our tables. And if you'll allow me to get a little bit meta with you, I'd like to offer a few suggestions for preventing it before it becomes an issue. The most obvious form of dishonesty you'll run into at a table tends to involve the dice. It's also one of the trickiest to call out in a diplomatic way. Because, right or wrong, the most likely result is the player you accused will leave your table. In this situation, it's easier to simply declare that all players must roll their bones within the sacred circle. What is the sacred circle, you ask? Well, it could be anything you want, really. It could be a small wooden corral at the base of a dice tower. It could be a dedicated space in front of the DM screen. It could even be the mouth of a dice cup when it's turned upside down on your table. The point is, the sacred circle represents a confined, easily observed place where dice can be rolled and left untouched. This won't stop convenient math errors on the part of your players, but it will ensure that players don't roll a twenty behind a stack of books or on the floor where no one else can see. Lying about your dice is the most obvious way someone can cheat at your table, but it's far from the only one. Perhaps the second most common kind of rule-breaking, though, is writing down the wrong bonuses, modifiers, and features on a character sheet. As such, the simple fix is to audit your player's sheets from time to time. And when I say audit, I don't just mean a quick, surface-level perusal. Do your best impression of a revenue collector and go point by point until you're satisfied. This ensures that your player's sheets are clean, and any convenient inconsistencies are taken care of before they become a problem at your table. Another difficulty dungeon masters face is that a lot of classes have one big gun with a limited number of bullets. Spellcasters have spells, monks have key, swashbucklers have panache, etc. Now in an ideal world, players would keep a careful and honest track of their own resources. However, it's all too easy for a player with mischief on their minds to say they're spending resources when, in fact, they have nothing left to spend. A good way to avoid this problem is to use some variety of token, like a poker chip, to represent how many bullets a player actually has left. In addition to keeping players honest, this strategy also adds an extra element of pressure to a game. Because it's one thing to know the cleric only has three spells left, but it's different when you've watched those chips steadily drop all session, and you're wondering how much mileage you can squeeze out of what's left. Also. Bonus points for using different colors or tokens to represent different levels of power. Helps make available resources understood at a glance. Lastly, keep an eye on those prepared casters. Glance over their lists before the game starts to make sure they've prepped the spells they're actually using on their turns. The end of a game session is sort of like the end of a race. You gave your all, your eyes are a little crossed, and you're not sure you can feel your toes anymore. At that point, it's all too easy to let a few details slip. Before you walk away from the table, though, take out your handy-dandy notebook and jot down some particulars. Who's still suffering conditions, who's got negative levels, which of them have been poisoned, little things like that. Real life happens, and sometimes players forget the details. However, sometimes that forgetting is awfully convenient. So make sure you do your part to track ongoing effects from session to session. Just because your players will be rested and refreshed, that doesn't mean their characters should be too. In any given session, you're going to roll a lot of checks. Even with minimal combat, you'll have diplomacy, intimidate, acrobatics, and a ridiculous number of perception checks to make. However, all too often, you'll have players who will be asked to make a check, fail, but then try to remake that check a dozen times because they're sure whatever they missed was of dire importance and they cannot let it go. Sometimes this is innocent, other times it's from players trying to win a role-playing game. However, you can solve a lot of these problems by just making certain rolls behind your screen where they can't see. 
The most obvious place to do this is for checks to spot ambushes or to spontaneously locate traps. If your players don't know what's coming, you make the check and tell them when they happen to hear the bowstring drawing back or notice the tripwire just in time. This cuts down on the pauses, and it ensures fewer me-too rolls when one player is asked to roll a die but doesn't get a good result. While not a necessity, try this one out and see if your game doesn't run a little smoother at the end of the day. Well, that's all for this episode of Dungeon Hacks. If you thought I raised some fine points, then like the episode and subscribe to the channel. If you want to support us here at Dungeon Keeper Radio, then check out the links in the description below. Follow us on Facebook, pledge to our Patreon, or just buy my minions a coffee. Let me tell you, they sure appreciate it. Until next time.